Welcome back to Glanny Gores, where the youngsters are out on track once again, this time in the form of Mini X30s. Macaulay Bishop is leading the championship with Jack Hobson in second. The man in third is Eden Spanswick. Let's go and see how he's qualified and how he gets on as we go and join your race commentators, Jake Sanson and Alan Taddei. Taylor Orridge and Finn Leslie will be on the front row of the green in the crop promotion squad. Eden Spanswick and George Robinson from Morgan Hill and Thomas Cucurillo Yeomans. Jack Hobson in seventh place alongside Ashton Wiggins. This is definitely going to be an interesting one in Mini X30. Up the hill they go and Taylor Orridge is our cameraman but already there's going to be pressure from Eden Spanswick and he's going to get some assistance from Finn Leslie. They both storm by. That was the lesser of two evils really for Taylor Orridge. He decides to let them go because you can't win on that one. You can definitely lose though. Absolutely and he's experienced enough to know that. We've got another move down the inside. They made that stick. Looks like they have. Looked like the... Uh... 86 there of Cucurillo Yeomans, I think it is. Jake's gone through to fourth. Indeed it is. So a good overtaking move there. George Robinson has ended up falling away from his fourth position slot. Jack Hobson making a good start. Ashton Wiggins likewise. So as they come off the final turn and into lap two, Taylor Orridge is down in third now behind Spanswick and Leslie. Then Cucurillo Yeomans, Hobson, Hill, Robinson. Ashton Wiggins is down in eighth still. So a lot of work for him to do. But there's definitely time to do it. And he's going to have a good charge up towards Spoon Curve. Four carts absolutely together. The fifth one is Jack Hobson. Watch out for Hobson. He's going to be making some big moves here. Up on the inside, Orridge goes for second. Gets the move. And a little hesitation from Leslie. That's enough to bring Cucurillo Yeomans in front. Not for long, though. So nice exit from Leslie as he holds that inside line and manages to keep third position for the moment. Hobson commits. That is such Superb. a hard move to do. Superb move by Jack Hobson there to go fourth. There's only uh, eight in this this weekend. We've had uh, uh, twice as many and more uh, earlier in the season, but there is a clash with another championship this weekend that's pretty much decimated the field, but you can still expect this race is going to be all out action. Yes, indeed. Calendar clash is very difficult to avoid in the current world situation. You've got to remember that you're trying to compress so many different forms of racing into a short calendar for COVID-19. But up the inside, there's Orange and there's Leslie. Both getting through. Watch for Hobson as well. Can he make it three? Not quite. He had to hang back there and he's actually going to lose fourth. As a result of that, he's dropped to sixth, I think. So Hobson actually losing a lot of ground there in just raw momentum. There's nothing you can do. I think he had two wheels on the grass, Jake. I think that's what it was. And just see if they go through the line. Yeah, Hobson down to six, but I'm pretty sure through the second part of the compression complex, he had two wheels on the grass. Watch for Leslie. It's him back. Spanswick trying to come through on the inside. Spanswick's going for Leslie. Oh, no, they ended up tagging wheels. And Spanswick gets through in a second. Leslie is struggling to hang on to third. He's not going to manage that. He drops to fourth. Hobson comes through. Robinson is side by side with Morgan Hill. Hill gets through. Let's watch again. Now, look, that's one driver trying to make an overtaking move while the other one is trying to make the move as well. So Leslie was going for Orridge, but Spanswick was going for him already. And then 86, Cucurilla Yeomans nearly got caught out as well. Now, is that going to be a front fairing penalty for Eden Spanswick? He certainly caught his front fairing on the rear of the car in front. And not only that, of course, the officials might argue, you also made a place up. So uh, I'm sure that will be under investigation at some point. Yeah, there's a possible argument for ABC, isn't there? Advantage by contact. So whether or not they're going to exercise that uh, little policy or not remains to be seen. But out in front, Taylor Orridge and Eden Spanswick. This battle continuing once again. Crop promotion versus the Paul Munn Racing Team. And Orridge versus Spanswick, these two very closely matched in terms of raw one lap pace. Is there going to be an opportunity for Spanswick? He's certainly going to hunt it down as Orridge comes across the line to continue to lead the race. Cucurillo Yeomans third from Hobson, Hill, Leslie, Robinson and Wiggins. So good recovery from Jack Hobson. He's already back into P4. Now trying to get that deficit down between himself and Cucurillo Yeomans. Who were the two drivers involved in that incident at Lark Hall, Jake? Who were the two? It was Taylor <laughs> Orridge. And the man right behind him, Eden Spanswick. We've there's, got uh, another battle on here. Yeah, the same two drivers. There's an old score to settle, essentially, isn't there? And both drivers will still have in the back of their mind, I was right in that. I was right in that situation. So now I'm going to... Oh! It's Cucurillo Yeomans, I think. Yeomans going off the road there. I think he's put two wheels on the grass. You just see him in the back, just here. 
there. Oh, he's, he's tried just... to get alongside Hobson. Now he's got two wheels on the grass, come back on the track, but of course he's got the water on his tyres, basically, yeah. and then he just slides off into no man's land. And the cart was vibrating big style. It was wobbling from side to side. You get that sort of washing machine style rumble. Look at that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see the clouds there. That's Rain not, is coming, is it? Is not good. These guys are all on slick tyres, and when it rains in Glanigors, it properly rains. They do not want a number in the middle of this race because it's definitely going to make things pretty spicy. Eden Spanswick and Taylor Orridge are going to be the ones who will be first on the scene. This could be a race winning opportunity for Eden Spanswick if he just sits patiently behind Taylor, lets him make the mistake on the greasy conditions first. He could snatch the lead away, but then the man who's now in third, uh, Finn Les also has a chance if both of them go together then he could snatch the advantage Jack Hobson sets the fastest lap of the race here comes Spanswick looking for the move on the inside no cheap overtaking moves for Eden Spanswick today Taylor Orridge is going to keep him honest Taylor Orridge is looking for redemption after Lark Hall Jake round three what happened there it was yep. Eden Spanswick that was coming up the inside they had a collision Taylor went through the barrier, missed a lot of the track and got a one lap penalty. I think that was the right decision by the clerk of the course. They may disagree, but he got a one lap penalty, but it's all about redemption today. Certainly and Taylor is. will be looking to not only finish better than he did last time, was he finished? He, he actually, well, I say better than last time. He actually crossed the line first, but then got his one lap penalty, didn't he? Indeed. So, so he slowed down, got back into second place, but the officials have already decided that's a one lap penalty. Well, this time he'll want to keep it if he can hold on in front of Eden Spanswick, but Spanswick will want to try and get the run. He's got a good opportunity. Just a little rub there. Can he get the run on the exit? This is such good cart placement by Taylor Orridge, just making Eden Spanswick sweat. It's not giving him any inch at all, but you just sense that Spanswick is going to try and make that bold lunge. The question is, where on the circuit will he try it? Because you've got to keep the guy in front of you guessing. You can't go for the obvious move, because obviously he's going to move to cover that opportunity. Leslie, Hobson, Hill and Robinson. Then Wiggins and Cucurilla Yeomans obviously a little way back after their moments in the race. So for Cucurilla Yeomans, he is down in eighth position, but he's still got to bring it home with a reduced field those are decent points you don't know what's going to happen in the end of the season so he's just got to keep himself together there and bring it home especially considering you don't know what's going to happen to the drivers in front he could well get a top six finish of the way things are currently going the battle for the lead very close absolutely battle for third and fourth here very close as well Leslie and Hobson Jack Hobson uh Took the win last time, of course, although uh, Taylor Orridge went through the line first. He got that one lap penalty and it was Hobson that made that fantastic move Stunning. in the hairpin on the last lap. Absolutely incredible move he made to uh, take the w take the win last time. And there is confirmation that he was the super final winner at round three. And that's now a confidence game changer, of course, for any driver. Once you pull off a big move like that to get a victory in that sort of fashion. We're going to see a very different Jack Hobson, a more confident, a more uh, able-bodied. He's going to take these chances a bit more because he'll know in his heart that he can pull it off. He'll know that he has that tenacity, he has that ability, and he will just grow and grow in stature and self-confidence. We're going to see a lot more stylish moves from Jack Hobson as he continues. Absolutely. He's a top-quality performer. We've known him for several years, that's for sure. I've not, we've not filmed him that much, but I have known him way back in the days of the British Championships that we were filming at the time. Uh, that was the first time we sort of really saw what he was capable of and we know he's a top quality performer. The one thing he does have to work on though, Jake, is the media side of things. We wanted to interview him this weekend about Lark Hall, but unfortunately he was just having none yeah. of it. He didn't want to do it. He's very shy and he's just going to have to work on that because if you're a racing driver, you get interviewed a lot. That's and if, it. If you were on... To say he was in Junior Ginetta or something like that on ITV4 and they come and stick a microphone in your face, yep. you're going to have to do an interview. It's as simple as that, live on TV. I've said it to racing drivers time and time again. If you don't want to be interviewed as a racing driver, finish fourth every weekend. If you want to win, you're going to have to get good in front of a camera. But you know where to find us, uh, Jack. You know, we're on social media. We'll help you out. We'll always give you some tips. Then Leslie and Jack Hobson battling away for third. Back on board with Taylor Orridge, another new fastest lap, 43.755. The difference between him and Spanswick in terms of lap time, minimal to the thousandth. There's nothing much between them at all as they go through. Here is Hobson, 
Charging after the 60, the MLC Motorsport driver there in fourth position, chasing down Finn Leslie on the crop promotion chassis. This is such a close run thing for first position and for third. And you've got to watch out because George Robinson and Morgan Hill want to pick up the pieces. They may sense that a cheeky podium is on the potential march here. If there's even the slightest moment between Leslie and Hobson, they could pick up the pieces. But still, Origin Spanswick disappearing. This is the moment. Is it? No, not quite. Because Orange again slams the door firmly shut on Spanswick. You're not going to get a decent overtaking move on me, mate. I am going to keep this door firmly slammed shut. And they won't want another collision today, not least because this is for the win. If they collide here and take each other out, they're taking each other not only off the podium, but off the top step of the podium potentially. So Eden will want to make the move clean. Uh, it, what, there was no deliberate intention last time. It was a coming together. You can argue a racing incident, however you want to argue it. One might argue that it was the other's fault, and the other one might argue it was no, it was, it was his fault, definitely, not my fault. <laughs> but whatever it was, in, at the end of the day, it didn't benefit either. Look how of far them. he's coming back from this time. Now he's nailed him. Brilliant from Spanswick. He just dropped a couple of cart lengths and used the draft to his good advantage. He thought I was a little bit too close in the braking zone last time and he used the momentum of the toe and he came from further back. That's how you storm up the inside. You leave no doubt. Yeah, and Taylor always gave him room that time, that's for sure. Must have seen him coming and then gave him room, let him pass because that's the right thing to do. Let him pass, you've lost the place. There's no point in battling for it and taking each other off. You, uh, you give the room to the driver down the inside and then you start battling again. Yeah, because there, there was a genuine possibility if there was another incident between those two, we could have built another gruesome rivalry. Remember the likes of Freddie Slater and Arvid Lindblad? That got personal a couple of times around the course. And I know that they don't speak very often as a result, even now, that one is in uh, senior and one is in junior. They're still not exactly bosom buddies. So uh, very interesting to see Spanswick and Orange settle their differences on the racetrack as it should be done. And that was a clean move from Spanswick, but Orange isn't out of this yet. He's still got plenty of time to get back on terms. He is running out of laps, but he has still got plenty of opportunities. If he just sticks with Spanswick like glue, he's still got an opportunity, especially now that he's the one in the toe, up the straight, up to spoon curve. He's the one that's going to make the deficit. Let's see if he can get his march. Look, he's already on terms with him again. Spanswick's now going to play the defensive card himself. The roles are reversed. Orange is someone that uh, we know quite well. We've had a lot of media contact with him over the years. There he, he goes. goes. He now takes the lead back. Oh, Taylor oh, Orange oh. back in front. Great move through the carousel. Fantastic stuff. He's somebody that we've uh, had a lot of media contact with over the years. He's, he's a lovely kid, he really is. So I've got a little bit of an affinity with him. I'd love to see him, notwithstanding that I do like Eden Spanswick as well as a driver. Great, great driver. But uh, I think if we saw Taylor Orridge win this one this weekend, I'd be a little bit of joy in my heart well, for Taylor, to be honest, after what happened last time. Can you imagine the fact that these two, you know, we've seen this time and time again with the likes of Billy Munger and Jamie Caroline. Their friendship and their uh, amiability has then transcended from carts into cars. Can you imagine these guys banging seven bells out of each other in British touring cars and having a great fight with each other from Thruxton to Brands Hatch to Donny to Bar? It'd be great to watch these guys grow. I mean, these guys could even go on and fight for the Karting World Championship in years to come as well. They, they, they've just got this ability. They're so evenly matched. The battle is so close. They've grown up on the same racetrack together. This could be a rivalry that could just grow and grow. Absolutely. You know I don't like uh, talking about cars, Jake. You but, don't like uh, those things you know, with rubes, do you? No, but <laughs> you've got to be fair. Let's be honest. These two drivers out front and others in this field as well, they could easily be racing at that level. We've said before, time and time again, how many times we've we've got, I mean, how many mechanics we've got in the paddock yeah. that could have been Formula One world champion, but they never got the chance in Formula One, and they certainly didn't get the chance in the right car. But now these two are battling, and they have swapped positions a couple of times. Look how close Jack Hobson is. He's not far away. Absolutely. Nine tenths of a second is nothing in the closing stages. If Spanswick goes for one more overtake. And let's be honest, he will if he gets half a chance. Then Jack Hobson has a chance to creep into this as they come across the line. They've only got two laps to go, so it's now or never for Hobson. But it's also now or never for Spanswick. He's coming from a couple of cart lengths back. He'll be in the toe, and he looks behind him. He knows that Hobson's going to be there. Here he goes, inside line at Spoon. And he's in the lead, and Hobson's going to go for it as well. He's through in a second. Perfect timing from Jack Hobson.
immaculate move. Yeah, Spanswick knew he couldn't wait until the last lap. He's got to get it done now because Orridge would have been hugging the inside line. And now Orridge has got it all on to do. He really has to try and find the space on Hobson. He's there on the inside. Well committed from Taylor Orridge. That is very brave and that could have gone so badly wrong coming into what is now going to be the final lap. And look, Hobson's actually lost ground. Leslie's gone through and Robinson's going to go through as we go into the last lap. Oh dear, oh dear for Hobson, that's the victory gone. Yeah, unfortunately, is that a race winning advantage for Eden Spanswick? This is the question, Jake, we're well into the last lap, we're halfway round. Yeah. Orridge getting closer, but he's going to have to make a super lunge here if he's going to win this race now. That's a decent enough gap for my money. Spanswick just needs to hold his racing line, but look how quickly Orridge is catching actually. I don't think this is done yet. There's a little drizzle on the circuit, so Spanswick is actually really struggling. Look how quickly Orridge has got him. This could be a final lap Banzai move. He tries through Devil's Elbow. He's going to have to cover Big Style in the final corner. He defends. Orridge is going to get the switch out. Side by side. He's got him. I don't believe it. 0.048. Shades of Harley Keeble and Freddie Slater at Sano in the European Championships earlier this year. Look at that. It's just a couple of inches. He's got him. And Taylor Orridge is going to take the victory. Eden Spanswick post-race has been excluded for being underweight. And unfortunately, Finn Leslie also an exclusion for non-compliance in scrutineering. That promotes Hobson to second. Robinson gets the podium in third ahead of Hill and Cucurello Yeomans. But what a steal by Taylor Orridge. Well, how about that? Eden Spanswick and Taylor Orridge were trading places for most of that race. And in the finish, though, Taylor Orridge with a bold move on the final corner just nicked it by four one hundredth of a second. Great racing from that youngster. Let's see what he had to say when we caught up with him at the podium. In commentary there, Taylor, we were talking about redemption, and this is redemption for you after Lark Hall. Fantastic result. Real big battle, though, out front. Is it the Gabe Stilp Go Faster suit that helped you there? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I've worn it all season, uh, tricks all the commentators, but the uh, second half of the season we've really come to life in my opinion. Yeah, it has. Uh, difficult in the beginning, but fantastic and brilliant today. Well done. Who do you want to thank for your weekend? Um, Grice for the motors, everyone from Croc, Dan Still, Simon and everyone that's helped me along the way. Dave Bell Chambers for the driver coaching. Okay, well done. How many times is that final lap going to be replayed in the Orange household? Macaulay Bishop still leads the championship despite not being here, but Jack Hobson and Taylor Orridge have made some good gains now. Spanswick is there in fourth position, Leslie and Robinson in the top six, but when Macaulay Bishop returns, he's going to have some opposition on his hands. Hobson, Orridge and Spanswick will be all over him. Mini X30 is proving to be just as exciting as ever there. And after the break, we go up an age group with the Junior X30s.